Hello and welcome back everybody. As you may see by my Estes count and my soul count, I took a stop by in Majula before I started up this episode to make sure that I was properly kitted out. And I spent a bunch of my souls upgrading my adaptability and attunement to be where they need to be. I got the 90 agility breakpoints, so I got those two extra iframes in my rolls that should... Ugh, you are kidding me. Like, the one run where this is so important to work and the, the falling barrel just didn't. There we go. But I've got my agility up to 90. Oh, that sounds like there's one that's still alive. There is. That's so frustrating because it's so difficult to scan a room when you're in first person mode. But as I was saying, I got the extra iframes and I increased my attunement all the way up to 10, so now I can have a whole spell attuned. I don't have any... Oh my god, where did you even come from? You're not supposed to be down here. Oh, gosh. Every time. Well, that's a great start. You know, it occurs to me that I may just be using this shield wrong. I grabbed the shield because it's a early small shield that has a very decent weight and decent blocking stats, and I have been completely neglecting its ability to block. This is a mistake that I hopefully will learn to remedy, but it's going to take a little bit of focus on my part. Did he come down behind me? No? Good. I think what happened is that occasionally, if you have the timing just right, you can actually uh, aggro the warden up here and have him follow you down when you try and head down that side area to grab the loot there. And I think that's exactly what happened, and because it took so long for me to roll out, uh, for me to clear that area, he managed to catch up to me just as I finished all that up and smite me while I was turned away. Very mean of him, but, you know, I can't exactly blame him. I was not playing properly, so I guess I kind of deserved it. Come on, Lucatil. Just give me your dialogues. I'm only talking with her because I'm going to want her uh, human effigy that she gives after you talk to her the second time. Because, honestly, I need it. <laughs> I am burning through... This is going to be a wonky run, but there we go. I am burning through my human effigies at a very disturbing rate. And this is going to be unsustainable unless I get some supplementary income from them. I'm starting with even less that I would normally have because I bought Ben Hart's Parma instead of an additional three of the uh, of the human effigies. So I am doing even worse than I would on a normal run. So it's just kind of the perfect storm of lack of supply. Hopefully I can clear that up in the near future. But right now it's just going to be a matter of focusing on not dying and trying to hoard as many of those as possible. Let's aggro this guy and draw him back a bit. That aggro him and then draw him back a bit so that he doesn't break that barrel right there. Okay, here we are. There we go. Completely avoid him and come in and stab him from the back. Because even though you can't backstab these guys, they are still vulnerable. Because they can't uh, really attack immediately after turning around, so you can use that time to abuse their AI and back off immediately. There we go. Oh, that didn't work, really? Come on. It's a lot easier to aim these things in third person. In first person, I'm not gonna lie. That is one of the few benefits to playing in first person, is that all sorts of, like, throwable items and consumables work really nicely. I am curious if spells are going to work the same way they do as when you're using binoculars, as in you can actually aim them towards the center of your screen, but I'm not sure, so I'm not going to pretend to know just yet. I'll find that out the moment I start actually using spells, but I, I don't really have that option right now considering my 
faith and intelligence are at eight and one respectively, so I can't really equip anything. Soon enough, I'll be able to equip heal if that's what I want to go for, but I actually think that uh, more sorcery focused hex build would fit Igel a little bit better because uh, he was such an intelligent figure making such interesting innovations and creations and pyromancy has always been a little bit closer to sorcery in the Dark Souls universe rather than being close to uh, faith even though they both benefit pyromancies. Now that we're back here in Majula we can spend a few more of these souls if we can upgrade this spear any. I think I have enough for just one. I'm also going to upgrade the Craftsman Hammer just because I'm probably going to be using it against the old okay. knights that are coming up and the Ironclads when we finally get to the, whatchamacallit, Old Iron Keep. So just hold on to everything that's going to be important to me and it's time to head down into the sinking land of Hade. I don't want to face the Ruin Sentinels without a really overpowered weapon, just because you kind of need to lock on to multiple... I mean, you need to really manage them because there's multiples fighting you at once, so unless you can burst them down on top of the platform before another one comes up to join, you're pretty much screwed. As such, I'm really hoping that... I can find some way to take them on, but honestly, I may just end up skipping them. I know it's kind of out of style for me, but uh, I think that may be the best idea just because of what a challenge they pose to this kind of run. And after seeing how horribly I borked the fight with the uh, Pursuer, I'm not quite confident that I have the ability to take them on in a pitched fight. Normally, I'm totally okay with just kiting around the arena and getting my hits in when I can, but I don't think that I'm going to be able to consistently pull that off when I'm in this first-person view. Because, as I've been saying so many times before, it just changes the combat. Now, I'm not trying to summon anybody, but I just want to light this up. It really throws me through a loop, and if things keep going as of the way they've been... I'm probably going to have to start using the Ring of Binding, which is completely out of character for me. I've never used the Ring of Binding outside of my very first run. Oh dear. No, no, no. Rolls, rolls. Come on, double Estus. There we go. There we go. Okay. Managed to pull that off. Got real worried near the end there, but he eventually decided to die on me bonus human effigy just so I can stay human that little smidge longer and that's another thing I'm considering is whether or not I want to be managing my human effigies or just using them whenever I have the opportunity because usually I spend a human effigy anytime that I'm not fully human but I'm dying a lot so I'm hollowing a lot and that's no good I, I really wasn't expecting it to be quite this challenging but I still think that I can pull it off, and I'm willing to go ahead even with the threat of hollowing hanging over my head, so we're just going to have to wait and see what the... Oh, come on, come on, there we go. Wait and see what the playthrough holds for us in that respect. But know that I am considering changing up the way I take this on. Roll out, roll out, wait for him to pull off his third swing. Heavy attack, gets the kill shot, beautiful. What do we get? Just a cracked blue eye out, or nothing of real import, but it's nice to have. Roll sideways. Blind rolls, everybody. Terrible idea, but you do what you have to. We're definitely not heading up to face the old Dragon Slayer just yet. I'm gonna want to be heading down and facing the uh, Dragon Rider. Singular rather than plural. What is that over there? I believe... That's just some souls or some useless consumable, so I'm not going to take the trouble to go back and get it, but I am going to know that I missed that, and that's going to frustrate me. Take a second to look at my feet so I can cross that just fine. 
Normally I have the confidence to just run right across, but not when I'm in first person like this. Not at all. Come on, there we go. Oh dear, I mistimed that. Now I need to get out. There we No! I failed the range, I failed the range. Time to leave. You've been fun, you're a great host, but I need to heal. There we go. So I did get at least one take of damage on him, which was almost enough, but there we go. He was so low that I had the opportunity to just come in and poke him once, and boy oh am I going to take it. Let's see what I can do versus this Dragon Rider. I considered cheesing him, but I really... Oh, <laughs> I was going to say that I want to make up for my failure to take on the Pursuer properly, but... Apparently, that's not going to work out for me either, so let's just kite around, stick to his back, and get a few quick thrusts in whenever we can. That seems like the ideal scenario here. Staying locked on is actually working quite well just because of how little his attacks rotate and how much I really don't even need to see where I'm looking so long as I can focus on knowing that my character is locked on to the boss. So long as I know that, I can always attack when I have stamina and safety to do so. And that allows me to kill him without going through all the trouble that I had with the first two bosses in the series. Honestly, Last Giant. Really. At least oh, the Dragon Rider didn't pose a problem, so... I can take him out, I can rest up at this bonfire, and then I can go have a chat with his friend, the old Dragon Slayer up there. Hello there, Lycia. I don't actually need anything from you, but I am going to talk to you until you want to go the locals. Actually, I do need to buy her Heal Miracle, because I didn't buy Melentia's, so I can just snag that. I don't think there's anything else I'm going to want here. I would consider Force, but probably not. It's a gimmick on my characters when I know that I'm going to be able to use it effectively. And so, in a character like this where I really am going to be struggling to pull off combat in an efficient manner, I don't want to go with anything superfluous or real gimmicky. I want to use what I know is going to work, and I want to make sure that I am playing in such a way that it's going to accommodate that really quick and efficient combat style. Get this guy from behind, swing, roll. Can I get a backwards attack? I cannot. Was I still locked? I was not, so I just borked that on my own powers. There we go. Roll out. No, I didn't roll out. But he's in range of a spear jab. Or of dying to a spear jab, so I can take advantage of that. This guy goes down, and he tried to follow up with a thrusting attack, but I managed to close the gap too fast. Down one of these Estus to keep myself healthy, and now there's only four? Yeah, I think it's four of these old knights standing between me and the old dragon slayer. I've fought these guys so many times throughout my playthroughs that I pretty much have their attack pattern memorized, and so I can roll just off of my memory of the timing alone. I don't actually have to face them to see what they're doing. Then again, the old, not the old knights, but the drake keepers up in the dragon shrine are basically carbon copies of these guys, but with a faster variety of that moveset, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to pull off the same trick with them. I would imagine that it's actually going to be a heck of a lot more difficult to uh, try that completely un... I don't know, uh, reverse camera rolling, where I'm rolling without actually seeing the opponent attack. But I don't quite know. I'm going to have to wait till I actually get to the Dragon Shrine, if I ever get to the Dragon Shrine, to see how that works out. But I'm going to be keeping that in mind. Roll out, roll out, roll out. Failed the timing on one of those, but I get the blind attacks for the kill shot, and I think I can go into this boss fight with that small 
bit of health missing. I don't need to use a life gem just yet. However, what I am going to do is to pull out a weapon buff for this, because I want to take down this old Dragon Slayer as fast as possible. Because he actually poses... You know what? Let's life gem just to be safe. He does pose a legitimate threat to me, and I want to make sure that I can take him. I do get this lovely set of human effigies, but hopefully I shouldn't have to use them. Herb it up. Get my aromatic ooze on to buff my spear. And we're golden. Let's fight this guy. Probably gonna want to rely on my shield a little bit more than I have been doing, but there we go. So long as I uh, start rotating my camera ahead of when I need to start looking someplace, I think I can get the timing down. Okay, come on. There we go. There we go, two pokes. And he turns around. I got my shield up. You can't see when I have my shield up unless I'm looking in a very specific direction, but you will be able to see its effects. Ooh, back it right on up. You're fun, but I'm going to have to take a rain check on that slash. Roll out, roll in to him and get some damage off. Beautiful. This is working out much better than I expected. Oh dear. Let's just get out because I can't quite tell what the range is on that. Grab a life gem just to heal in the interim. Okay, I managed to get an unlocked hit, but only one. Oh dear. I mucked up the timing there. Come on, come on. You're at half health. Oh. I did not want to attack there. He did tie himself up after the slash, but there we go. I want to back it up. Uh, that's not going to do anything. What are you trying to pull? Your dark magic has no power here. Let's see. Oh, completely whiffed that because I keep trying to pull off an unlocked attack like I would if I was playing in like PvP, but I think I should really just stick to what I know is going to work and keep myself locked on. There we go. He pulls out his four-hit combo, I pull out my four-rolled combo. I'm willing to take that trade all day, every day, especially if you follow it up with something silly like that. Two more hits should be enough to take him down, and he opens himself wide up. Beautiful. Turns out I am the better spear wielder of us two, so that's good to see. Whew, that was an intense fight. I'm really, really impressed by how this mod is changing up the bosses. I was not expecting to have this much trouble, and it's really throwing me through a loop. It's really actually quite interesting to be fearful of bosses again, and it's a good experience. I think this is like one of the first times that I've had my adrenaline really rushing from a Souls fight in quite some time just because of how rare it is to find a challenge in most bosses because there's usually no threat of death, and even when there is, I'm pretty much prepared to take the death in my stride, because I know I can just come back right afterwards, but... Wow, it's it's really having an effect on me. I think this is going to be where I cut the episode. Thank you all so much for watching. I'm having a really, really great time with this mod. It's really throwing me through a ringer and getting my blood pressure up, so... It's quite the experience. Like, comment, subscribe. I would enjoy having a little chat with you down in the comments below and thank you all so much for watching have a great day